Welcome back to Undying Magic. I'm your host Ty, and today we look at my boy Azgir. Ty overturns, but it's in Baras. Totally. Azgir is 2 and Baras for 4-4 four, four, with Vigilance, which is very nice. He has a Sack Outlet on him, which you have to pay 1 mana for. And you can pump a creature, and then you can pay X, exiling an artifact with CMC X from, from your graveyard, and make 2 copies of that artifact. And you have to tap Azgir to do that. So first, we're going to talk about the wing com. Ugin's Nexus can be paired with Isochron Scepter imprinted with Pull from Tomorrow to each turn, exile the Nexus, creating two copies, sacrificing both, and then pulling it back into the yard to be remade by Azgir with the Pull from Tomorrow. Please note when making copies of Uga's Nexus, you can't pass a turn with any copies left on the field, as the static ability will make you skip your next turn, and I learned that the hard way. <laughs> um, I thought I was being clever, leaving one on the battlefield and like saving mana, but um, yeah, I tried to pass the turn and it just wasn't letting me have it, I'm afraid. What I love about this loop is that all the cards by themselves synergize and work really well as standalone cards. If you have the Nexus by itself, taking an extra turn for five mana is just really good. The Isochron Scepter, you know, I run a lot of instant two mana value sub spells, like instant speed removal and protection, which is things that you want in a deck anyways, unless of course you're just building a bad deck. And then the pull from tomorrow is just really useful. If there's some powerful thing that you want to do again, and the same goes for this next wing con. It's the most consistent infinite loop and it uses Mirror of Fate paired with the Nexus. Okay? So, you have both of them in your graveyard. You exile Uga's Nexus, make two tokens, sacrifice both, and take two extra turns. On the first extra turn, you then make two copies of the Mirror and you use one of them to put the Nexus in your exile on top of your library and of course your whole library into your exile. Then on your last extra turn, you draw the Ugas Nexus, pull it back into your graveyard. There's plenty of ways to rummage or discard or mill in the list. And then of course you are now back at the start, except you have an extra mirror to then put the mirror in exile plus whatever other six cards you want back into your library. And you can run this quite a lot of times. Now you're probably thinking, how Tyrone, how Ty, do you win by just having infinite terms? Well, you can pretty much pick your poison. You could run stuff like Hellcat Tyrant to give you an easy win once you have infinite turns, but that would just be a dead card that you draw into. So the way that I like to win is once you have infinite turns, you kind of realize that you can have infinite activations of Osgear. So what I like to do is just make an infinite amount of any artifact creature in the list and then attack over whatever board my opponents have. That's the best way to win, right? It's kind of like in Tatty Overturns, where there's no real win con, except like just once you have infinite turns, you Cyclonic Rift and then just attack everyone with Tatty Over one by one. It's, uh, it's, yeah. I don't run many tutors in my list. Goblin Engineer and Kuldofa Forge Master, however, are two cheap, amazing ways to tutor. Of course, if you want to slam in all the gambles and enlightened tutors and all that generic good stuff, of course you can do that. It will increase the power level of the list. Now, with Goblin Engineer in our hand, we have access to the Mirror of Fate loop. Let me show you how. When we play Goblin Engineer, we're going to search up Cursed Mirror. Okay? We'll then exile it from our yard using Osgear, the Curse Mirror, and then have two copies which will enter as Goblin Engineer. Now we search again for two things, and the two things of course will be Uga's Nexus and Mirror Fate. If you want to increase the redundancy and consistency even more, you can run Imperial Recruiter, Recruiter of the Guard, or Goblin Matron to then get the Goblin Engineer and have just even more chance of, of getting this combo. Of course, my list is a casual deck and I don't really want to be doing it all, all the time. 
I also want to point out how all these cards by themselves are just really dope standalone cards and they make the list churn out value really well. Now let's talk about a really beautiful lock, which I love. Never, never in your old disc. <laughs> it's a decent board wipe. It's a good one. But when you pair it with Isochron and print it with Boas Charm, you have a one-sided board wipe that you can do every single turn. And your, and your opponents will need two answers to deal with it. You can activate the Boas Charm in response to whatever their first answer is. And obviously at that point, if they don't have two answers, they're going to be top decking for answers whilst you blow up everything and then swing for massive damage every turn. Now the weakest infinite loop in the list, which is first on the chopping board for better cards, is Zerda and Basalt Monolith. It of course creates infinite mana. Both of these cards are really great by themselves. The Basalt, you can pay three mana, exile it and get six colorless. Zerda makes Ozgear cheaper. Um, in my list, I use Steel Hellkite as an outlet for infinite mana because it's really funny. Just kill one person. Um, it's also uh, makes it a lot more casual and a lot more funner for my opponents to play against. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some unique ways to draw cards. Some unique ways. Mask of Memory loots as well. Netting us a card. Doubling it is really good. Coveted Drool is really powerful because once it's in your graveyard, you can exile it and then you'll be the same on mana, but you'll be up six cards and that's really powerful. And of course with Ozgear, you can sacrifice them so your opponents don't get their hands on it. Quicksmith Genius is one of the weaker spells and there was a new card which was spoiled from Mono Horizons where whenever you cast a non-creature, I think, you surveil. I think I'm going to swap it out for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty decent. If you're exiling at least one thing every turn, you're doing a faithless looting every turn, which is really good. Magus of the Wheel I like, because I'm on Sun Titan. Um, it's not the most powerful. It's slow, but it's reliable. Combustible Gear Hulk is very nice in a list where you run Blasphemous Act. It's also great, because it's a powerful beater, and wherever our opponents pick, of course, we're getting card advantage. Plague is a really great slot. It hits a lot of boxes, and I'm going to talk more about that. Tome of Legends is pretty nice. It's an artifact. We can double it. Draws us cards. We attack with Ozgear. It's nice. And let's talk about Plague. It rummages. It gives us a mana sink, and the backside can act as an untapper for Ozgear. It's really dope. The only downside is that it's not an artifact. Let's talk about Ramp, the most boring part. It's great because with Ozgear, you can play rocks, sacrifice it, and then make two of them. Pretty good. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't play rocks that enter tapped. Now, I said boring, but Power Stone Shard is far from it. Once you get into the territory of having three or more of these, the mana they produce is stupid. If you have four of these on a battlefield, that's 16 colorless mana. Um, and there's plenty of ways to get several copies in this list. Another noteworthy piece of ramp is the Lotus Bloom. We always want to pitch this in the yard so we can get six mana out of nowhere. And the expedition map is nice as I'm on the Urza lands. And with Ozgear, we have access to all of them pretty easily. This deck is a value list. It has a combo, but it's not turbo. It's slow distance over time like Great Album. So we want lots of removal and some hate and some stacks to slow down the game. Ozgear breaks through parody uh, breaks parody through stacks really beautifully. In my opinion, it's what Boas and Lawhold do best. Slugging it out and arising victorious. Let's talk about Dispatch. I've never played it and not had Magecraft be activated. Portable Hole, another spoiler. Can't wait for it to come out. It's going to be nice and cheap. And it's going to get rid of things like Alt of Dementia, Greaves, Boots, Remora, Sylvan Library, Dark Still Mutation, Dranith, Rocks. Uh, Collector Oof, rest in peace. Off the top of my head, the list, I imagine, is, is, is a lot bigger. Um, Khan. One-sided Collector Oof that brings back our stuff from Exile and can infinitely loop Ugin's Nexus with Khan's Bastion. Pretty damn solid. Duplicant and Meteor Golem. The high CMC 
but in casual, it's powerful because it's recurrable. And when you have things like Goblin Welder, um, Ozgia, Doretti, you can loop these things several times a turn. When you pair that with the fact that you're attacking with massive creatures, it becomes really annoying to play against. Ever Sworn Cannonist. It's the only rule of law effect I'm winning in this list. I'm gonna be winning more. If you want a higher power, you should be winning all of them. They're really powerful, and Ozgia plays through them really well. Um, it's just great, and it and it's an artifact. It's really really good. Rumcloak Giant is a nice one. You keep your unique engine piece and just get rid of everything else. Graph because Graph Digger's Cage is hilarious because Ozgia gets around this as well. I didn't originally pull it in the list because I was like, oh, that won't work. I can't bring back stuff with Ozgear. No, you can. And if we ever need to get something out with like Goblin Welder, we can just sacrifice the Graph Digger's Cage and then bring it back. And even Mind Sensor is just a good all around hate piece. Still Hellkite, it beats face and it removes stuff. Very underrated. Correction Revolker is a meta call. Um, for me, I face a lot of Najilas and Kinnons and Garvey's and Prof and Sisse and all that nasty stuff. Dampening Sphere is a great budget alternative to Fawn of Amethyst and the likes. Uh, doubling it makes it really potent. Like, no one's going to be casting spells past number two because at that point, uh, everything, your first spell is going to cost four more. And that's just ridiculous. And then we come to some standalone cards, um, which do like a bunch of stuff. You have like Thousand Year Elixir. That's a bit of a weak card though. It's probably going to get cut. Goblin Welder, stupidly powerful. Triplicate Titan is just amazingly fun if you're playing casual. Uh, Call of Forge Matter have already covered that. There's a Saga, another spoiled card, which just upgrades this deck amazingly. Anointed Procession is a great card. Um, expensive as hell. Um, I won't be having it in my list. Uh, Urza's Mind, obviously Tron Lands. Ancient Den, Artifact Lands, more Ramp. Uh, Rings of Bright Herp and Battle Mage's Braces. These two cards, as well as Illusionist Braces, um, they're what really make the things that Ozgear does stupid. It's the same as the Anointed Procession, but the fact that these are artifacts means we can then double these and then doubly double the things that we're doubling. Right? So that's eight extra turns when you exile uh, Ugin's Nexus. That's. Oh my god, I can't even do the math. That's. <laughs> wait. That's 24 cards that you draw and 24 mana when you exile the coveted jewel. I got it right, wait, wait. If you make eight copies of it, eight times three, yeah, yeah, it's 24. I, I know math. Um, and then, of course, Deretti. Really great card. It rummages. It recurs stuff. <sighs> so good. And yeah, that is the list. It's a really good deck. I didn't expect it to crush my opponents as well as it did. I thought it'd be really slow and sluggy. Like, the fact that his ability was sorcery speed, I thought that was a horrible nerf. But when you play it, you realize, oh shoot, they did that because it would be busted if it wasn't sorcery speed. Like the things that you could do in terms of like discarding something and then like in response to some trigger, then activating it. Because that's what I tried to do and I realized, of course, I can't. But if, if it was instant speed and, and you could like exile stuff in response to triggers, ah, it'd be so good. Anyways, I don't want to drag on. I hope, I hope you like the list. It's really nice. Value, 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 more value, value. Peace out. This has been me and undying magic. Yeah.